Welcome to the Bookshelf Odyssey podcast. My name is Art, and it's time to break out the blankets and the hot tea because we're talking cozy mysteries today. I'll be interviewing author Darcy Hanna. She is the writer of the Beacon Bake Shop mystery series. Now, I will be reviewing those books in an upcoming video on YouTube. So if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, there's a ton of bonus videos there. You can go to YouTube and search Bookshelf Odyssey podcast and I'll be, I'll come up and I'll have links in the show notes for you. But if you're thinking, I would sure like to listen to this podcast while doing something like driving or jogging or taking a shower, maybe that last one, I, I don't want to be in the shower with you. Sorry. <laughs> so you can just go ahead and put our awkwardness aside, go over to uh, bookshelfodyssey.com and you can find the, the podcast feed there and you can download it through all major podcasting apps and platforms. All right, it's good to be back and interviewing another uh, author for the podcast. Before we get to that, in other news, uh, uh, we are starting book th three of our Great Expectations read-along. And the next video will be out this Saturday, April 30th, covering chapters 40 through 42. Uh, so if you are new to Great Expectations and you want to join in mid-book, um, interesting choice. I'm not going to criticize you. You can go ahead and watch that video uh, that'll be out on Saturday, or you can go all the way back and begin with video one, and I'll have a link here somewhere. I'm not sure how to do this yet. You can check that out. We're having a lot of fun reading Great Expectations, reading it slowly throughout this year. We'll end about mid end of May, I believe it will be. So if that's your first time through or your 10th time through, we'd love to have you and see what you think about uh, the book. Okay, that's all I have uh, for the intro. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with Darcy. Uh, I, I feel like I, I, I met a kindred spirit and we could have talked for hours, uh, I think, just about books, her writing, her stories, and uh, just a wonderful, positive person and an excellent writer. And I know if you like Cozy Mysteries, you'll love this series, the Beacon Bake Shop Mystery Series. Um, so in the interview, we chat about uh, her books, her writing life, what inspired her to write this series. We also talk about, of course, the uh, the usual book recommendations and what inspires her to write. And we share a fun story or two along the way. If you loved this interview and you want more of Darcy, stay tuned for my on my Christmas podcast. I'll be interviewing her about her uh, second book in this series, and it's called Murder at the Christmas Cookie Bake Off. And you can find that on the Cozy Christmas Podcast channel. And that interview will come out near the end of May. I'll link to my other podcasts in the show notes below so you can check that out. And that's all the introduction I have now. So I'll go ahead and play the interview I had with Cozy Mystery Writer Darcy Hanna. Welcome back, everyone, to the Bookshelf Odyssey podcast. And I have a special guest with us today. Uh, cozy mystery author Darcy Hanna uh, is with us, and she is writing the the new series, The Beacon Bake Shop Mystery. And if you like baked goods, this series, you will um, gobble it up. How about that? <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah, uh, she's got a new one coming out. Where's the camera? There we go. Uh, Murder at the Blueberry Festival. And uh, I haven't read it yet, but it, I'm about to, and I'm excited because I've read the first two in the series that are, and they're just excellent. So Darcy, welcome uh, to the Bookshelf Odyssey. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, and great intro. Yummy, okay. delicious. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love bakery and I love a cozy mystery. So this just was about perfect for me. <laughs> well, you know what? So me too. <laughs> like, how can I combine my love of baked goods, mysteries, and lighthouses? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now this series takes place in Michigan and it looks like uh, according to your website, you're, you live there as well. So is the, the Beacon Bake Shop uh, inspired by your home? Uh, no, I don't. Well, don't I wish? Uh, you mean my home in Michigan or my <laughs> lighthouse that I live in? <laughs> oh uh, yeah. Either one. <laughs> Do you live in a lighthouse or? <laughs> no, it's so funny because I, um, we've been living in Michigan for, I think we've been here about 20 years. And my, the very first cozy I wrote was a cherry a uh, very cherry mystery series. And that was set in Door County, Wisconsin, a place I used to visit all the time when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I had just gotten that one published. It was a three book deal. And then the publisher like uh, disbanded before I got my third book. And that really, they published two books. And the one book was only out for like six months before they, they shut down. So that was the first experience I had writing cozy mysteries. 
and I really liked it. And I had a, a, a new agent, you know, who handles the cozy mysteries. And she said, you need to think of something else right now. And so that kind of got me thinking about it, it kind of revolved around baked goods, but mm-hmm. I limited my shelf to cherries. <laughs> so I thought if I ever do this again, I want to have, you know, I want to set it in Michigan where I live and I would not want to limit myself to a fruit, <laughs> so I like baked goods in general, because I, I do, um, I have experienced baking. I just think it's a fun thing to do. But when I was, when we were, gosh, when I was in my, probably my early thirties or late twenties, my one, my youngest brother, I decided to buy a bakery on a whim and he didn't know what he was doing, but he, he's a fabulous baker and he would call me in. And so that's why I think baking for me is a little bit part of my makeup, my genetic makeup. We just are not trained bakers, but bakers by nature. So being in Michigan, while I was trying to brainstorm this new series and I really liked what I was doing. My husband always looks on the internet for properties and he's like, Hey, do you want to buy a lighthouse? Cause we have some lighthouses for sale in Michigan. And so I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and usually the lighthouses for sale are like in the middle of the lake. So you have to like boat to them and then you're stranded out there. But I thought, Oh my God, wouldn't it be awesome? Cause I, for some reason, I like lighthouses. Um, I think they are really fun to write about because they also bring in that mysterious element. So I knew mm-hmm. I wanted to somehow combine a lighthouse with baked goods. And literally that's how, you know, and then to know that there's some for sale um, and it can be done probably uh, legally. So that's mm-hmm. how I decided like, oh my God, wouldn't it be awesome to write about a bakery in a historic lighthouse in, you know, beautiful Lake Michigan, you know, Michigan. Mm-hmm. So that's essentially what I was thinking. <laughs> what were the processes I was going through? Well, it all it all came together. <laughs> I'm on the mental note, just don't limit yourself to cherries because they are big cherry growers here in Michigan. So, oh, okay. We will explore that in some book. Believe me. All we'll right. The road book, you know. <laughs> you know, to start off, I like to ask the really difficult question of what is your favorite book and why. Oh, this is, this is, these are the hardest questions really. Cause I love reading. Um, mm-hmm. and it's changed, I think throughout the course of my life. Um, but believe it or not, one of my all time favorite books is called the game of Kings. I think the game of Kings by Dorothy Dunnett. She's a Scottish uh, historical fiction writer. Mm-hmm. And I read that book and I, it was kind of like, wow, kind of life-changing. So it, it's not really, there's always mysteries in these books, but it was so heavily detailed with, just beautiful writing and historical detail and just taking you, transporting you to another place in time. That, that one to me, it's so weird because like throughout my life, I love Gone with the Wind. Like I like these big epics, which is, I like mysteries too, but it seems like the books that move me are these bigger epics. So mm. trying to capture that in a, in a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. my goal. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah, I love asking that question to people because I'm always adding to my, my uh, TBR list and oh, it's right, crazy. right now it's really just, I'm not, I'm going to be dead before I even get through it. So <laughs> I have a list and everybody will recommend books and, you know, every yep. book looks so good and the covers too. I'm a sucker for covers. Yes. Like I will judge a book. Cover. I, I do <laughs> too. I do too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is a thing. And I don't know how I fell into these books because this author had passed away in 20, I think 2000. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was one of those things where I just read everything she did after that. Um, she did write mysteries and I couldn't get a hold of her mysteries because they were, I think, out of print. Um, so that's kind of one of my goals. But I do like those. I, I For some reason, reading wise, I kind of like those older authors. But I'm really on a kick right now of Cozy Mysteries. So that's mm-hmm. been a kind of a newer thing for me, believe it or not. I mean, within the last probably five or six years. And I'm loving it. So I'm reading just a lot of Cozy Mysteries right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I've been doing that too lately and I started getting, I think some of the plots mixed up in my head. So, Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. And then I'm like, which book did I read this in? You right. Know? And it's, yeah. So if I, books, I'm like, have I done this already? <laughs> so if I mention a, a part in your book I liked and it's not in your book, just, That's just okay. pretend we'll, it was. Yeah. We'll just go with it. <laughs> I would, at this point, I don't even know what is in my books. Okay, good. You're writing the new series of uh, uh, the Beacon Bake Shop mystery, and again, here's that beautiful cover there. And the whole the whole series has a lovely cover, and oh. um, I, I love you put an animal on the cover, and I'm probably gonna pick it up. So, <laughs> oh, that's me too. I'm yeah. a huge dog. Lo- I would love cats, and everybody's like, "Why don't you have a cat in your book?" And it's because I'm allergic to cats, so mm-hmm. that. 
that's why you might not see one for a while. <laughs> yeah. But. I, yeah, I, uh, I'm not allergic, but I have some family that, that are, um, like my, my wife's parent or, or mom is deathly allergic and my sister is deathly allergic. So, it's, um, if I ever want to see them, we, we can't have one. Well, so <laughs> cats, I know cats are just, well, cats are, I love cats. When I was a kid, I used yeah. to try to take neighborhood cats and bring them in my garage and pretend they were mine. Not a good mm -hmm. thing. So my parents were, I think my mom was allergic too. And I was, I get asthma. My eyes would mm -hmm. push, you know, just swell shut. Um, but it's funny because my sons, the first thing that my oldest son did when he moved out of the house was get a cat. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> mom, you deprived me of owning a cat all my life. So when I visit, I just have to take, you know, Claritin or something. Yeah. Because I do, I do love cats, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with that every day. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. My, we had one when I, when my sister and I were teenagers and didn't know she was allergic and, <sighs> and she had this horrible <sighs> asthma attack and like <sighs> was hospitalized and, and they figured out her allergy and, and basically said, well, you got to get rid of your cat. Yeah, or, or your sister, you know, and I, I said, well, okay, let me think about this. Let's not rush into this decision here. <laughs> I know it's too, it is a tough decision. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't win brother of the year award for that one. Yeah. So. <laughs> but you know, back when I was a kid, I probably would have been like, why well, the cat loves me more, you know, right, yeah. to the mother, you know, so no, I, I, I get that reasoning. I think that's hilarious. But yeah, well, so, I, so and and um the Newfoundland I the, that's on the cover and it's so funny because one of my favorite dogs I mean I love dogs of all kinds but I we used to own a Newfoundland years ago and it's, it was one of these kind of dogs that I've always wanted since I was a kid but they're giants and uh, so I figured what better dog to have at a lighthouse than a Newfoundland because they're kind of known for water rescue and they're great water dogs. And so writing about that Newfoundland, I have right now, I've like my two dogs down here. I feel like I write in a, um, like a doggy daycare center. <laughs> so if somebody comes in or when somebody's moving around, they might make noise. Um, but I use a lot of my own dog's antics to write the Newfoundlands because <laughs> I don't have a Newfoundland anymore, but, <laughs> but, uh, oh, they're such lovable dogs. And that's part of the joy of me is like, you know, I'll, I'll read some reviews or just like, you know, people's yeah reviews on Amazon or whatever. And their favorite character is the dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I kind of love that. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, Wellington is the dog in the series, and uh, he he's a riot. Uh, you know, always begging for food, and it, poor dog living in a, in a bakery practically. Oh. It's <laughs> oh, no. I I a, it's terrible. I have one dog that I have a Springer Spaniel that just like he works me over with his eyes for food, and so he mm -hmm. is like the soul of Wellington because there's nothing that my dog won't. He'll eat, you know, deer poop, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. He just loves food. If he had hands, he'd just eat himself to death. <laughs> That's <laughs> that great. But he has been known to, um, uh, when I was baking, you know, like I'll try baking things. I have to be very careful not to, you know, when my kids were younger and in school, they're all like in their twenties now, but, um, I would like make a you know, maybe a big thing of uh, muffins. And I remember I would leave them on the counter to cool, run, pick the kids up. And I came back and he had eaten all 12 muffins, like mm -hmm. in a, you know, so, so he's known to do, um, and I'm, and I think he gets the, I have a golden retriever too. I think he gets her in on it, but they are sly, but if they know there's food in the house and we leave, there's, um, they know how to get it. And it's, it's horrible. I don't know how to do <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't have bread out. I found loaves of bread and, you know, like their Bible beds. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, that ethical eating really happens in my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, again, they say, write what you know. So, <laughs> I, you know, that, that's kind of the secret. <laughs> Not too far from the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the uh, the first book in the series is called Murder at the uh, Beacon Bake Shop, yeah. and uh, it follows the character of uh, Lindsay Bakewell. Tell us a little bit about uh, the series, and, and uh, I know you've kind of already influenced or told us what the original right. influence is, but um, tell us a bit about Lindsay and, and where, where we find her at the beginning of the series. Sure. So um, Lindsay was one of those characters, like I said, when I was trying to brainstorm something, Mm -hmm. knew and I really wanted to do a lighthouse in Michigan. Um, I just wanted to have that person who wasn't really from Michigan to experience, you know, running a business in this Michigan. And so Lindsay just popped into my head um, and she's the smart, um, 
she's she's a very fun character to write because she's she was an investment banker in New York City. So when we first meet her, um, she's well, her backstory it comes out probably in the first chapter, but um mm-hmm. she was dating a celebrity, like an up-and-coming celebrity chef, um, Jeffrey Plank, who uh, was famous for cooking meats on things, you know, like, <laughs> like salts and I don't know. Um, so he's like just this crazy little sh- celebrity chef. And her friends like gave her lessons, uh, cooking lessons with this chef because her last name was Bakewell. So they kind of give her a hard time that her last name is Bakewell. And the reason I picked that name, not because she's a baker, but I really wanted to make a Bakewell tart. It's a very English kind of dessert. And I've, I was watching um, an episode of um, the great British baking show. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was like, I need to get one of those pans. I need to write a Bakewell tart. And this is while I'm trying to come up with a new book. Right. So that's how she got the name of Bakewell. So I just make fun of that. And then I put her in a bakery, which is ironic, but, um, but anyhow, so Lindsay is going to this famous, this, you know, beautiful restaurant that her celebrity chef boyfriend, you know, is running it's mm-hmm. her birthday and she finds him in a compromising position with his pastry chef, um, Mia Long. And so she gets, you know, like she's mad. So she goes home, she anger bakes, that's kind of her thing. Um, and then she drinks a bottle of wine and she does a little shopping on the internet to calm herself down. And the next morning she wakes up and she realizes she bought a lighthouse in Beacon Harbor, uh, <laughs> Michigan. And she's staring at the lighthouse and she's like, mm, you know what? I think I'll do this. And so she just decides to make this life change um, because she just needs to do something different. And she's, you know, she's fortunate because she, I'm going to say she's a good saver. She has, she, you know, she can, she can now start her own business. Um, and she's still fairly young. Um, another fun thing about her is her dad, you know, worked on Wall Street and her mother's this ex 80 supermodel. So, <laughs> so that's kind of like her parents. She's an only child. So anyhow, she decides to throw everything you know, all caution to the wind. She has a giant Newfoundland. They're living in a, a New York City apartment and they decide to make the move to Beacon Harbor. And she, you know, it, she's a little bit of a fish out of water at first, but she, you know, renovates this lighthouse and makes it into to a bakery and a place where she can live. And she's really loving her life until, you know, she's, she really wants to explore baking as a career. Um, But her opening day in the first book, the opening day, all of a sudden, you know, her ghost from her past come it, um, her ex-boyfriend or ex-fiance Jeffrey Plank uh, arrives with his, um, you know, girlfriend Mia Long. And uh, so they try to, they try to destroy her bakery and she has no idea why. Uh, and and he, and it ends up that um, Mia ends up uh, dying on her lawn opening day. So that kind of gets her involved in trying to solve a mystery. So she's, you know, new life, trying to start fresh, wants nothing to do with these people in New York City. And boom, one of them is dead on her lawn. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, she appears to be a suspect. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. because yeah, they're eating and drinking her stuff, you know, they're kind of trying to ruin her bakery and throwing her donuts and grabbing, yeah. you know, things. And so, yeah, so she's definitely a suspect and, and uh, she doesn't like that too much. Well, I, I, Perversely, I kind of like that scene where they just come oh, in and start wrecking the place and throwing food and grabbing food out of people's hands and uh, thinking, if you want to destroy her business, you're doing a great job. I just thought, like, what would be the worst thing to happen on opening day? And then you've got, well, another part of the story is like she buys this lighthouse and the lighthouse, you know, the, the light, what, what do I call it? The Lighthouse Preservation Society. Mm, yeah. uh, really that with her, there's a kind of a woman there that just really, you know, Lindsay's her target. And so she's trying to destroy the bakery too. And so everybody's trying to destroy this bakery. Um, and so it's kind of, it's, that's so much fun for me to write. <laughs> and then her crazy friend swoops in from New York, the, the, um, mm. uh, fa- what is it? Fashion uh, influencer and blogger. Yeah. And what does she do? It's podcaster. Um, yeah. And she's, she's kind of stirs the pot a little bit. So. Yeah. I, uh, for the first, first one, I listened to the audio bar, audio book. Uh, and I, I really recommend the audio books. If you, if you all like audio, uh, the reader, she does a great job, especially with Kennedy. I really like <laughs> her, yeah, her she, voice. She and, watches Kennedy. It's kind of just like a little attitude, you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so this is a, a, a great series just full of uh-huh. really excellent characters that you can enjoy mm-hmm. watching and, or reading about. And uh, of course, there's the uh, mysterious and hunky uh, ex Navy SEAL guy living up the beach. And 
Uh, I to, yeah, I just had to throw in, um, and this is kind of like one of those things, like the very first novel that I got published, I, I used to write historical fiction. Mm-hmm. And it was about a lighthouse set on this like very lonely coast of Scotland. It was a little bit gothic-y. And um, the light keeper there, his name was Willie Campbell. And so, you know, like you kind of keep these characters in your head. And so I knew I wanted to, you know, kind of bring that into the story a little bit. So we have um, Rory Campbell, who lives down the lighthouse, lives, she's, she's like the closest neighbor to Lindsay. And how they meet in the beginning is kind of funny. I don't want to ruin that for anybody, but right. um, it's something that like my dog would do. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, he, he's a good boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so there, she's trying to figure out who, you know, like, you know, what this guy's deal. And so he's, it's kind of like, he's, you know, I living in Michigan, you, it, there is a hunting culture up here, right? And so I'm not a hunter. I'm mm-hmm. uh, too, I love animals too much, but mm-hmm. I have a lot of neighbors that, you know, during hunting season, like you keep, everybody, everything closes. And it, it was kind of a new phenomenon to me. Um, but it's very interesting. Um, and so I kind of, that is very Michigan-y, you know what I mean? So like, that's something that people, you know, fish a lot. They, you know, I live by a little lake here and, you know, just fishermen on all the time in the winter, they ice fishing. And it's, and it's just, to me, it's like fascinating. I just think, you know, it's not for me, but it's mm-hmm. a fascinating way of life, I guess. And so it's very, very Michigan-y. So I kind of wanted him to be this very different from Lindsay and um, just kind of, yeah. And, and then plus his ex Navy seal stuff. And as, as the series progresses, like I think the, this, uh, the blueberry book, you learn a little bit more about Rory and uh, a, a book coming up in the future. You will too. So he'll, we'll mm-hmm. kind of delve into his background a little bit, but he's, uh, he's also fun to write about since I have all sons, I grew up with all brothers and husbands. I'm just kind of surrounded by this, you know, so, so writing, I love writing male characters. Mm-hmm. I don't pretend to like, like want to get in the head of one, but you know what? I think it's, it's fun to write about. So, so I, I really, I really like him as a character too. He's a lot of fun to write about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, well, I don't want to spoil the ending either. So, but uh, the, the, the ending of the, um, uh, let's see, uh, the, fir- the first one. Yeah. When, um, when she figures out who, who done it and, and he comes to the rescue, um, it, anyway, uh, but yeah, that, that part's great. <laughs> I, I'm like, Oh, she's going to swoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. I just, I love, I love like, um, so I love humor in books, obviously. And so when I write these things, I just, you know, it's kind of terrible to say, but I just want to entertain myself, you know, and I have mm-hmm. kind of a wacky family. Right. And so, um, you know, it's like just trying to think of like, you know, what would this person do in this situation? What would they, you know this person do and how would they feel? And and so a lot of that is just really enjoyable for me. Like writing dialogue is is kind of fun if they're in a weird position, you know, mm-hmm. and um, just getting them into weird situations. And, you know, like the, you know, little things were like if they see a dead body, like they're not too happy about that. And so, you know, I just <laughs> like there's one scene where they, they have to actually smell the person, I guess. Or yeah, yeah. Like, don't smell the dead body. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, my phone. My phone didn't like that. Um, no, but it was, it was like, that was like something that, you know, I could just picture like my friends doing like, like you smell mm. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, th- this, this series has a lot of humor to it. Um, some coziness to it. it it's and what, what I like too is, you know, the mystery doesn't happen on page one. Um, Thank and, you. Sorry, uh, even and then after it's solved, there's still there's still some time left in the book. It just didn't get solved in the end. It gave the characters time to be be that be themselves and grow, and you get to know the characters through it too. So I, I really like that. See, I see. I thank you so much for saying that because, uh, you know, I didn't start out writing cozy mysteries, and mm-hmm. um, and I can tell I can tell you this little story, but I didn't really quite know what a cozy mystery was. And so when I would write a historical fiction and it would kind of, they would have humor in them and it would be like kind of, you know, um, there's always a mysterious element. And so when I, I had a two book contract and then that I went, as I was writing my third book, I, you know, my agent was like, okay, you know, you, whatever, we're not doing any more historical fiction, right? Why don't you write a cozy, why don't you write a mystery? So I, I did, I wrote a mystery. I had no idea what I was doing, but I wanted it modern and I wanted it funny. I wanted it to be very different from what I did uh, in the historical fiction world. And so I just kind of told it like I tell historical fiction, but I made it very modern and 
whatever, you know, just took more time with character development and kind of wacky scenes, I guess. So when I went to give it to that agent, I I'd called it, it was so funny because in my head it was um, uh, Caddyshack meets um, Scooby-Doo. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, like, not a good, it was very funny. It was set on a golf course. I, that agent passed. And so I, that's when I got a, an agent that really handled mysteries and she wrote it and she goes, you know, you've written a cozy mystery here, but I got to tell you something. She goes, you need a hook. And I said, well, it's on a golf course in, in, you know, in a place called Cherry Cove. Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, golf is a leisure time pursuit and leisure time pursuits don't sell. So can you come up with something different? And that was the first time that I actually understood like that. I didn't, I mean, that there was rules to this genre, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that's how ignorant I was when I started. (laughs) I just (laughs) learned every day. I learned something new. And one of them, to your point was the murder should happen within, I think it's at the first 30 or first 50 pages. Mm, yeah. There, I, I there's know, something but, like that that says, oh, this is a mystery if the murder happens. And I try, but I really want to set up the scene. I think for me, the fun is bringing you into that place because I love like my favorite kinds of TV shows are ones where, you know, they're, they're funny but mm-hmm. you're in that community, you're with a group of friends, you're, you know, you're setting up and then all of a sudden the, the, the adventure happens and then everybody comes back at the end and it's all whatever. And so that's kind of in my head, how I think of a cozy mystery. So I know I'm going to kill somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I usually know who's going to do it, but I want to set up a fun, inviting like scenario for that to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I try to do. And I I think I did get, um, because I know the the first, I mean, let me just say the first three books, I don't kill anybody. Maybe I'm going to say the first four, but whatever. You're probably not going to want, and one of the, I was thinking about this the other day. And I'm like, I should just start with a dead body. Like one, like to throw people off, you know, but I don't do that. So the, the murder, like my, my agent was like, you know, I'm a little concerned because the murder doesn't happen until later on. And I, and I thought, all right, well, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. I didn't change it. And I think it's okay. Do you know what I mean? I think the mm-hmm. way it, it happens is all right. So, but that is always something in the back of my mind. Like I should kill this person. Sooner. <laughs> <laughs> you think that when you're like sitting there, like, you know, you're a happy little world. And you're like, oh, I should kill somebody today. <laughs> I kept on my husband, like my goal this week is to kill somebody. You know, <laughs> pages under me. So, yeah. So yeah, be careful for saying that because if people yeah. expect um, cozy mysteries to be a certain way, right? And so they're mm-hmm. they're gentler read. You can't really swear. Um, I try to like. That's one thing. Like, I'm not a big swearer, but I might say something that maybe is a little bit of an innuendo, and I do get a slap on the wrist for that. <laughs> <laughs> All in the name of humor. But you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I get, I, you know, that's something where I might push the envelope a little bit for the genre. Um, and, and of course not killing somebody until they deserve to die. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I like cozies, but if everyone wrote with the same formula, eventually that would really, you know, wear yeah. out. So what I, what I like is when, you know, you've got the elements, but then you kind of take a fresh approach to it or a different approach, even yeah. Even something like that. Um, I, I just interviewed an author, and her character is is, is happily married at the beginning of this of the series. And I'm like, well, that's different. You know, usually it's the single woman who's just been divorced or something. And, and right, right, and, that's um, very, yeah. that's awesome. So I, you know, I, I point that out. Like, hey, this is this is a kind of a twist on what you usually find, and it's a little thing, but it's one of those little things that I I like to that it kind of keeps it fresh for me. So. Right. Right. And I think that is because there's so many books out there. I mean, my gosh, like every day I'm like, what am I going to read? You know, and it's just, there's so many fabulous. I mean, I love cozy mystery covers. I gotta say, I would love to wallpaper like my house and cozy mystery covers because they are beautiful. Um, And they're fun. And you can just see like, you know, just a glimmer of the mystery inside. Um, But Mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. Uh, I think there is a, you know, like we, we've all read the, you know, the, Miss Marple kind of mm-hmm. cozy mystery where, you know, they're, they're very clever and it's a little slower moving, but I do feel that maybe there's a, a push to have things move a little faster. I don't know, but um, I do like it when you read something that's a little unexpected and I'm very happy that, that you find it that way because you, as a writer, you never know mm-hmm. how people are going to take what you do. So. 
all, all you can do is just throw it out there and uh, you know give it the give it the best you can and 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 put it out into the world. So yeah, yeah, and I, well, I think part of what works in your book is the characters are so fun. You, you oh, know, good. Thank you. I, I, Thank the you. first one I was. Uh, it was first or second one. Now I can't remember which of the one I, I had this thought, but I was thinking, oh, the murder hasn't happened. No, oh, well, <laughs> you know, it's not it probably wasn't the second one because was... she'll get around to it. <laughs> eventually, okay, eventually I will kill somebody, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's what I mean. I'm like, you know, because I, there's so much I want to say up front, and I want to set right. like you know, what everybody's doing. And... Well, it's I get to see, especially the first one in a series, to yeah. You, yeah. just to get everything established you don't want to rush through that so yeah, um, might take time with it a little bit right a, a couple other things about this series i like is there there's just a a touch of mystery to it or, or uh, magic to it maybe Lindsay might have a, a a ghostly presence in her lighthouse uh the captain from uh, his ghost may or may not be haunting the I don't know, not the hallways, I guess, but the tower. <laughs> well, the, the white tower. We don't know where he's haunting, but right. yes, um, I love. So that comes from my historical fiction days too. I I I love a touch of paranormal, and it's because it's. I mean, I'm a I'm I kind of live in a weird world, right? Where I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, wow, that could happen. And every time I go take a lighthouse tour, like you know, my poor husband, I'm like, oh, there's a lighthouse. Let's go. Let's go look in it. And so mm-hmm. I'll get a tour. I'll ask the docent, and I'm like. So who still lives here? And mm-hmm. he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, you know what I mean. Who still lives here? <laughs> and they're, like, they're like, okay. So at night we hear, you know, and there's always a story. There's mm-hmm. always a story of a haunted, a haunted lighthouse or whatever. And it just, and they're fun. And I think that adds, because it's a, it's a mystery and she's in an older building. Um, and I, I'm not one who believes like, you know, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just like a little element, like a little, um, maybe like she feels a presence. It's not like, it's not about a ghost solving a mystery, but mm-hmm. it's about her living in a lighthouse that has a history to it. And maybe the imprint or the, the spirit of that first light keeper who had that really important job of, you know, protecting the coast um, in a very dangerous time. Mm-hmm. It was a very lonely and very dangerous job, you know? And so, maybe that 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 anchored like him in some way to that that position so so that's just kind of like what I feel whenever I you know I'm in a lighthouse I'm like wow what did this place what did this place see you know it's just part of like loving to walk through old historic buildings but um I just think that gives that a little more of a a mystery and and as the as the um as the series develops her relationship with that part of the lighthouse develops too because she's a Mm -hmm. you know big city girl she's like completely like ghost like what are you talking about this is not haunted that's right i mean no nonsense new yorker come on right. and then, <laughs> so then I'm like, oh, everybody knows your lighthouse is haunted because you know in every town you know like even in my town i live in we have a yeah. we have a historic opera house that everybody's like it's haunted and you know i've been in there and i've caught some weird pictures in there i don't mm-hmm. i you know i don't know what it is but uh, it doesn't bother me, you know, mm-hmm. but, but it's always like, everybody wants to go there. Everyone, you know, so it's kind of that thing. And so, um, and, and I'm just going to, you know, do a little spoiler alert, but um, I am the book after the blueberry festival is a Halloween book. Mm. <laughs> so I'm working on that now and I get to explore. It's funny. So I get to explore a little bit more about that. I'm very excited to do that and not in a yeah. bad way, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Just kind yeah. of keep that mystery alive a little bit. Oh, well, um, yeah, fall and early winter is my favorite time of year. So, oh, um, yeah. Fall is, and the baked goods, because. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. <laughs> well, they, they were like, oh, what would, you, what would you like to do next? And I'm like, um, fall baked goods. There's a lot of things I would love to do with these, you know, these characters. Yep. And, um, you know, so so hopefully I'll get to do them all eventually. But um, one of them was definitely like just a fun like pumpkin fall festival type of thing with, I mean, just think of the baked goods, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pumpkin, apples. Uh, no, yeah. I'm gaining weight just thinking about I know, it. So. I know. Apples, yeah. Yeah. everything in the fall is like the best. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, and, and speaking of that, that's one of the other things I like about this series too, is you have recipes in the back and uh, you know, in the interest of research, I, I, I made the, uh, the cherry chocolate chunk cookies from the first book 
and those are very, very good. So oh. are, now are these your recipes or, or did you steal them from someone? No. <laughs> but, <laughs> Look at nothing's original. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, no. It was so funny because my kids love chocolate chip cookies. But mm-hmm. I love oatmeal. So when they were younger, I and I'm like, oh, oatmeal's just healthier, you know. But mm-hmm. then what I would do is take like basically an oatmeal base and then just throw everything into it. And that's where you get the chocolate chunk cookie kind of. Um, I think does that, does that one do I have white chocolate in it or dark or regular chocolate? Um you, you, yeah, you said white chocolate, but you, you can, also said you can yeah. yeah. So, so I, I did the um semi-sweet chocolate chips, yeah. I think it was. So yeah, that's that was good. my favorite, but the white chocolate is good in that too. So, so basically, you know, like I use toasted pecans a lot because I love them. Like mm-hmm. I love them in baked goods, depending on, so I think it has some pecans in that one too, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Have, um, but the, but dried cherries, oh my gosh, they are, I eat a lot of them. Uh, and mm-hmm. so <laughs> that's the reason I wrote a whole cherry series, but <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like not a whole cherry series, but you know what I mean? So that is one of the cookies that, you know, my kids would go to college. I would send them because they would, they last Mm-hmm. Also, when you feel, when you eat them for breakfast, you don't feel that guilty. They're oh, good, good breakfast I, food. I, I <laughs> ate one because I'm like, this is basically oatmeal. I mean, come on. <laughs> carrot cake is the same thing for me. So like yeah. if you make a carrot cake, it's breakfast, you know. I, that's I right. think that's kind of a carrot cake breakfast muffin, which is essentially, you know, it's not quite as dense as a real carrot cake because it still is a muffin, but it mm-hmm. has that um, cream cheese frosting on it. Mm-hmm. Um, one day, like in one of the books, I have like, this carrot cake recipe that I inherited. Um, and it's an old German recipe that my mom used to make for me. And I think she got it from a neighbor and that one will be like, I don't think I've added much uniqueness to that one, but it has a Pinocha frosting on it, which is Mm -hmm. that like kind of caramel. It is a dense carrot. It's the best thing in the world. So hopefully someday I'll get to write about that one. Mm It's a fall, that's a fall treat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Kind of fun for me is thinking of like, what are they going to eat in this book? Mm. I, I should have had a, some kind of a, a warning at the beginning to, you know, make sure you grab your <laughs> snacks because this one's going to make you hungry. <laughs> uh, to donuts and start reading. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, but yeah, th- these, these cookies were a hit with everyone I shared them with. And oh, my, my wife came home and, and the house just smelled so good. And it's that uh, cinnamon. Yep. And butter and sugar. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I and then I put in walnuts instead of pecans, okay, and and th- and that because uh, I I like the walnuts, so that that was good. Um, it's a crunch. I, it doesn't matter what you put in there; it has to have. Yeah. Like, you know, like I make my kids make fun of me because they're like, "Oh, butter and sugar! You're making you're cooking with butter and sugar again?" Because they always see it in my mixer. Yeah, I'm like everything good in life starts with butter and sugar. <laughs> you you might be you right. Add, then you add the flour, and that, you know. But it's um, any kind of crunch in in a cookie like that, like an oatmeal cookie. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's good. Walnut is a good choice. Yeah, it was it was good. Um, yeah, and I was telling my wife, you, you know, there's like two and a half cups of butter in there, and she's like, "Well, no wonder it's good." Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. It's, all one. <laughs> <laughs> it's only one or two or three. Yeah. <laughs> How are you making a lot of cookies with that thing? You know. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes yeah. like even I will look at the recipe. One of my kids is so funny because they were starting to, they're starting to get into baking. They're getting older and, you know, mm. um, COVID happened and they're watching baking videos. And one of them was making this delicious carrot cake, but it was very gourmet. Like it's not something that, you know, it was a little bit more than I make. And I looked at the frosting recipe and it was a brown butter frosting. Uh, and it called for like four, it called for a whole pound of butter and mm. not, enough sugar and i'm looking at that i'm like that is wrong <laughs> four <laughs> sticks of butter like oh, wow. in frosting with only like i think it was like two cups of powdered sugar i'm like no 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 where'd you get that recipe <laughs> that that's we need more yeah <laughs> more sugar and less butter <laughs> i know my butter sugar proportions there you are <laughs> oh my stomach is growling now no kidding <laughs> I still have some leftover cookies downstairs, so you'll know what I'll be doing yeah. after we're done well, here. Yeah. Well, one. We could have had a little snack while we talk about food. Yeah, do yeah. Have, do you drink coffee too? I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. It's so, always like dangerous because, like, whenever you have a a baked good and it just goes so well with coffee. Yeah, and and that's that's just a it's a vicious circle mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, coffee. It's well, it's like, something like, sweet. And, Oh yeah. It's Midwestern hospitality. You know, it's like, Oh, come on, have coffee and something to eat with that coffee. (laughs) Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I live in Iowa. So uh, oh, I love it. Okay, I was going to ask yeah. you where you're from because I knew your central time. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is Iowa the one that's known for, or is this Minnesota? But there was a book of casseroles. Hmm. So we were talking about, and it was either Minnesota casseroles or Iowa casseroles. And that just killed me because like the whole state was known for like all the it's delicious casseroles. It's a Midwest thing, right? Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like an old Midwest thing. Was, and I was cracking up and they were just talking about like this book of casseroles and it was either Iowa or Minnesota, but I was like, well, I want that book. <laughs> I, I, I could see it being Iowa. Um, yeah. I mean, I could see it being Minnesota too, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. If you're sick or been in the hospital, you're going to have neighbors showing up with casseroles for you. So <laughs> the, the series has just about everything you'd, you'd want. The uh, perfect ingredients for, uh, <laughs> I can't help with the puns. Sorry. I know. I love it. Uh, good pun. <laughs> I highly recommend the series. It's it's a great series. Um, I, I loved the first one. And then I read the second one, which I won't really talk about here, but it's, it happens at Christmas time. So um, stay tuned to my other podcast. I'll give myself a plug here uh, to the Cozy Christmas podcast, because I'm going to have Darcy back on to talk about that one specifically. Um, and that will be probably look for it around the end of May or so is, is when uh, we'll get that episode out. So we so, should bring, um, we should all have cookies when we do that because it is about Christmas cookies. So yeah, uh, make more cookies. Yes. And yes. I, will make cookies. <laughs> now, I won't have anyone here arguing with me on that one. So <laughs> just, just don't put any poison in them or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, cookie chat. Yeah. No poison. Keep the ingredients <laughs> butter, sugar, and whatever. <laughs> That's right. <Water>. No arsenic, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, that one, I, I really enjoyed that second one. Um, and it could be because, you know, I, I love Christmas a lot. So it could have been that. But, I you know, obviously, a talented writer and, and a good oh, good okay. book, good series. So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading book three here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, so everyone stay tuned. I'll probably be doing a, a video or something, talk, uh, doing a little review of the series at some, oh, some point. So, uh, but yeah, run out get these books you won't regret it so <laughs> or you might regret not doing it there we go <laughs> well, does that sound like a threat i don't mean to threat threaten anyone <laughs> because we do murder people <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh, well now i gotta now i gotta ask you if you do any google searching for your uh, uh murder ideas and <laughs> well, i had i have this cop that um one of my writer friends um gave me and it's just it's holly holly quinn or she's writing under holly danvers and i gave her a quote for one of her books and she sent me this awesome mug and it says um uh don't ignore my google search i'm a mystery writer something like it was so funny yeah. because it's, i try not to google things like that you know mm. what i mean just because i again i'm like what if somebody sees this so i have a book of um i think it's like a writer's guide to poisons and then I, you know, just, just a lot of things like you'll see um, ways to kill people. Or sometimes I'll just say, what are the effects of this? I don't like ever Google, like how to murder somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I'll Google a lot of like weird things. Like sometimes like for fashions, I'm not the greatest with fashions. To, and, and as the, as the series goes on, you know, the mother gets more involved and the, her friend Kennedy, she's a fascinista, fascinista, fascinista. Fashionista. Okay, I can't talk anymore. Fashionista. Fashionista. Naz, I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll just like Google kind of like crazy fashions mm -hmm. and you know that kind of thing. Or that's that's a lot of what I Google. Maybe I might Google a weapon, but I have some weapons experts that live with me. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, these young minds that'll be like, have you ever thought of killing somebody like this? And I'm like, no, no. But, <laughs> So for right now, I have not, um, my Google search isn't too crazy. Okay. It's not, you know, it's not good, but, <laughs> but it's not going to get me arrested. That's what I'm going to say. Things being what they are, you, you know, you're going to search how to kill someone and then your neighbor dies and then the police look at Oh, like, I know. I know. Hey, hey yeah. <laughs> what have you been searching lately? I mean, yeah. it's really weird. Like my husband always makes this joke because, um, and I used to have this book on my, we're kind of redoing things. And so all my books are taken away in my bookshelves, but, um, I used to have that writer's guide to poisons on my mm -hmm. desk and I would look through it. I'm like, they're just, it's just like a lot of um, plants that can kill you. You know, mm -hmm. you can just go to horticulture um, or even, you know, just other, so many things.
you start reading what can kill you, you realize how fragile life is and how careful we have to be with food. That's again, another plug for butter and sugar. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> okay. It might, if you take so much, of it, but you know what I mean? Right. So, um, just, just even like, uh, I think in one of my earlier books, you know, I was looking at, you know, like pits of fruits can kill you in the mm. right quality, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's um, cyanide. cyanide. It's just, it's just crazy. So anyhow, but my husband used to tell people that, you know, I have this book on my desk and he doesn't sleep well at night. And in other ways, you know, there's just so much out there too. I mean, my goodness, like every murder mystery movie out there, they're so clever, you know, mm. they, they think of such crazy ways. Um, and I try not to be too influenced by that stuff as well. So I, I try to try to make it a little more, like, I don't know, organic, I suppose. But at the end of the day, you know, I think so much has already been done already. So, you know, kill somebody with cyanide or arsenic, you know, it's been done before, but it still is still is fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason it's a popular poison, right? <laughs> it works. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get in any more trouble here. <laughs> what we're talking about. Um, with this podcast, you're talking off a lot about murder. <laughs> now, if I were to kill someone, <laughs> how can I get away with it? <laughs> well, we'll edit that out. Yeah, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> we are. All right. We better go on to other things here. So, um, well, before we do wrap up, I like to ask three questions of my guests. Uh, these are questions that uh, I, I find the answers to be interesting. And it also, one of them will add to my TBR list. So, oh, awesome. uh, but first of all, I, you know, I find that words have, have power and stories have power. And uh, so when did you realize that words and stories have power? And it was so funny because I, I didn't really ever know I wanted to be a writer until probably my late 20s, early 30s. But when I was little, I, I must have been a storyteller. And I remember we came back from vacation. I was eight years old and my grandma called and I told her all about these raccoons that had gotten into our house that we, you know, our vacation house and what they did and how they destroyed things. They were in the kitchen mm-hmm. and how my dad had to you know deal with them and all these things. And so then my mom walks in and I hand her the phone. And I walk out of the room and, and uh, my grandma is like, oh my gosh, I heard all about the raccoon that was in the cabin. And my mom's like, what raccoon? And she's like, well, Darcy told me all about the raccoon. And so my grandma thought that was hilarious. I had to sit down with my mom and she had to explain to me the difference between truth and, you know, non-truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I used to like, I would just tell stories and I didn't really, I did it, I think to entertain people. But I think that's when I realized, like my grandma bought it hook, line, and sinker. And then when she realized it was not true, <laughs> she got a big kick out of it. So, um, yeah. yeah, that was, <laughs> was like, oh, if I say something and I, I in a convincing way, people will believe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, just just a personal story that like really affected, you know, my my grandmother mm-hmm. one way, my mother the other. So. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's neat. And then uh, what have you been reading recently that you would uh, recommend to us? I brought it here. I just finished it. I, um, Mm -hmm. well, the first cozy mystery series I ever read and I loved, and I was happy that it had been out for a while and there was a lot of books in the series. Um, So I just read, oh, there it is. Death of a Green Eye Monster by MC Beaton. Sure. Um, I love MC Beaton. She passed away. When was it last? I think it was 2020. Uh, or 2019. She passed away a while yeah, ago. Very recently. Um, yeah. She has a she now has a another writer that's that's picked up the series. I'm hesitant to read something, mm-hmm. you know, after the original author is gone, but he's taken her characters. Um, and I, I particularly love Hamish Macbeth because he's set up in Scotland in this really charming little town. Um, and so I read this and I thought it was just a really wonderful addition because you don't know what's going to happen to it. Um, mm-hmm. if anything, he's actually put a little more three-dimensionality into the series. So I really, really enjoyed that book. Mm. And right now, and then what I'm working on now, I haven't finished it, is um, Death in an Irish Village by mm-hmm. Charlene O'Con- O'Connor. O- o- O'Connor, yeah. Yeah, I that, so. I'm yeah. Really, really enjoying that. I'm not done with that one yet. Yeah, I, uh, I read one of her recent ones. And then, so now I'm going to go back and, and reread <laughs> I uh, have to series. read them in order too. So I started because yeah, yeah. I, I love those covers. Her covers are beautiful too. Yes, uh, yeah. Her, her, I, 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 I read one for the my Christmas podcast in, and I, and I want to get interviewer sometime because I really okay. enjoyed it. But 
but yeah, I got, no, I got to go back and start at the beginning. I just have to, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I did. I just decided because yeah. I wanted that most recent one. I'm like, I'm going to start from book one, you know, and she does such a great job of the, with the Irish dialect. Mm -hmm. um, and that blows me away too. people who can do that very well. So you just feel like you're submersed in, in an Irish village and uh, mm -hmm. that's a gift. So I mean, I recommend that one as well. It's just that I haven't finished it. So yeah, <laughs> I have no, no idea who the murderer is. Oh, I, I've got a couple myself. <laughs> I'm right there. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I'm about halfway through a book called, uh, it's called Unmissing by Ooh. Minka Kent. Ooh. And it's, uh, the story is about, uh, and this all happens within the first chapter, uh, but it's this, um, husband, there's a husband and wife and his first wife, uh, they thought had died. So he had remarried and has his family and everything. And then one dark and stormy night, his first wife shows up and she's alive. <laughs> and That's always like, not a good thing. Whoa. That's always, that's always a drama. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting is, is the chapters each take place, like alternate between perspectives. Wow. So you get the first wife's perspective, then you get the second wife. Oh, and, that's interesting. Yeah. And then I'm about like, about halfway through and and now you i'm wondering you know is there an unreliable narrator at work here uh because the the second wife comes across very very differently from her perspective chapters and well she they're two totally different perspectives i'm sure yeah, right? yeah 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 um and so who's the telling the truth that's that's yeah. so that's this, like this a book, thriller like this, yeah this, this, this book yeah. is messing with my head yeah, yeah. i i was kind of sleep last night and i thought i should just get up and read the rest of it oh, just... <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? yeah right yeah, what's true. going on and and it, yeah it turns out she was kidnapped and held captive for you know nine or ten years or something oh, i mean it's God. it's got some pretty dark and disturbing yeah. elements to it but yeah. it's so far none of it has been graphic it, it's just sure. been uh, more psychological that yeah. you're wondering okay between the husband and the two wives, somebody here is crazy, but I'm not sure who. <laughs> it might be me. <laughs> you know? Those are so interesting to read too, because you're just, you're always questioning, you're right, the narrator. Yeah. You know, I know something's not right, but I can't figure out what it is. And that's mm -hmm. real, that's a gift, you know, right. to like that too. That's, oh, that's awesome. So yeah, I, I've really been enjoying that. And it, it, my wife laughs at me because I'm reading cozy mysteries and then i'll read something like a psychological thriller and, and sometimes yeah, at the sure. same time yeah and she's like it's it's a disturbing place in your brain isn't it well, well, you know, that's a good, it's a good balance though because like you know yeah. that's the one thing with the cozy mystery genre and that i i really kind of like because you know like the psycho thrills are great and they suck you right in uh and sometimes you're not you, you don't know where they're going and sometimes they are very disturbing um but with the cozy yeah, it's murder, and that is always disturbing. But right. you know, it can't take it, it. It has to stay on a certain level. Mm -hmm. And so I think so. Like for your brain, you're probably like, "This is comfortable. I'm not. I know I can sleep after reading this, but this one, this one's like, you know, you've got that that mental intrigue. And so that's very cool. It, it really, I mean, it depends on my mood. And, and like on my podcast, I don't focus on one particular genre, but. It seems like I'm tending towards mysteries right now, and yeah. you know that's fine. I, I'm, I just, I always say I used to, I used to read mysteries whenever my life got too stressful because something about, you know, solving the crime helps my brain yeah. organize my own life. And considering that's how many true. I've been reading lately, <laughs> it's like, what does that say about your life? No. <laughs> yeah, it's my life wildly out of control now. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I enjoy the mystery part of it, and, and that's what I like about both a cozy and, you know, a psychological thriller is mm -hmm. there's a mystery that needs to be solved. And whether it's who poisoned my, you know, my boyfriend's girlfriend <laughs> or, or no, my ex, ex fiance's. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> my boyfriend's boyfriend. Isn't that, wasn't that like a comedy guy? Like my girlfriend's boyfriend or my, yeah. So <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, you know, trying to unravel what happened to this woman. Why is she still alive? You know, that kind of, thing. I don't know. It, it, it's at its heart. There's a mystery that needs yeah. to be solved and I, mm -hmm. and I like it. So <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and you think when you read those, you're like, wow, how did somebody come up with this? You know what I mean? And that's what, that's the thing about writing that is so cool or being able to tell a story. Um, mm -hmm. And I appreciate so much in others when I read other people's work. I'm like, that is so awesome. Like, how how do they think of that? You know what I mean? And you're just kind of, when you get to the end, you're like, wow. 
and it should be that really fun journey or, or something like you've learned something or something's been resolved that makes you feel good. I don't like the books that nothing's resolved and it just ends. I haven't read too many of those, but <laughs> I think I've had read, read a few and you're just like, no, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> or, or the ones that, you know, they, they kind of end in a vague way and they say, no, well, the true. author says, oh, you got to draw your own conclusion. And I'm like, no, this is what I want you to do for me. <laughs> Tell me what happened. The book. No, yeah. <laughs> Tell me what happened, please. <laughs> yeah, there's something about a satisfying ending. Yeah. And I think for me, <clears throat> that's the fun of writing it because it does get chaos, right? You know, you have a story and then there's like this utter chaos. And then you, like you said, you have to solve it and unravel it and bring it back together mm-hmm. into some order. And I think as human beings, we like, that neat order we want that in our lives whether we have it or not you know it's Mm -hmm. (laughs) we strive for it right but um i think that's the the real cool joy about reading is like that why did this happen especially with murder mysteries or mysteries any kind of mystery is like you know what could that possibly be and i'm always always um amazed you know at at how people bring all those elements in and and give you this like cool resolution so very yeah. very fun industry to write in I, I tell you and to read in yeah definitely um all right one one final question here what writing advice would you give to a beginning author if anybody's ever heard me talk <laughs> i am not your i've gotten so many rejections when i started i didn't know i wanted to be a writer but i will t- tell you this um if you believe that this is what you are meant to do and if you can tell a story and you love writing then you need to just persevere. Don't be afraid of rejection. Don't be afraid of failure. Um, because it's really not about that. Like writing a novel in itself is a journey. And so just keep, you know, keep that, that goal in front of you and, and believe in yourself and, and keep writing. You, you get better. Everything you write makes you a better author. It, it makes you understand things better. You know, like I said, like when I wrote a cozy mystery, I didn't even know I had written a cozy mystery, mm. but it is an industry where you're constantly learning as well. Um, but if you want to be a traditionally published author, believe me, just keep going, keep, keep believing in yourself and keep, keep trying. Don't give up. Yeah. This is, this is my uh, weekly pep talk. So I <laughs> no, appreciate it, that answer. Yeah. Because it, I mean, even for people who've been in the industry, it is not an easy industry. <laughs> no. Yeah. You I know? mean, it, there's a lot of writers out there. I mean, and just be honest and yeah. a lot of books. And, and it and, doesn't mean like if you're a writer and you're getting rejected, it doesn't mean that you're not a good writer. And, and it took me a long time to realize this as well. But sometimes, so if you want to go the traditional route, you you know, you need an agent and that's hard to find too. But every rejection you get brings you closer to the right person and you will find that right person. You just have to believe it. And that right person will like what you do and will know how to bring you to that next level. And so it, you're kind of, it's a, it's a step, it's a series of steps you take, but believe me, I mean, when I sometimes give talks, I bring my, my, my kids love it. I bring these like, ah, there's the camera, um, mm. packages of all the rejections I've gotten, um, mm. first at historical fiction. And then when that, I could no longer write in that, that gen- I learned that, you know, a book basically is a product, right. Mm-hmm. And, and again, you have to sell that product to be able to keep doing it. That's another lesson. <laughs> Let's for another day. Let's not think about that. <laughs> Let's just, think right, about that. Right. Let's just keep going, keep trying and keep believing in yourself. Thank you. Uh, and so where, where can people find you online? Where do you, well, where do you hang out? Sure. Well, I, I have a website at www.darcyhanna.com. So my name is D-A-R-C-I. H A N N A H. So, and then um, I'm on Facebook at either author Darcy Hanna or Darcy Hanna. And then um, I, I also am on, um, oh gosh. Uh, Instagram. Are Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like you can say how tech savvy I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I, I also upload cooking videos to YouTube. I wouldn't say I'm a YouTuber. I think it's just a place that holds my videos, but, but I do have a YouTube channel. So, okay. Um, but a lot of it is like when I'm, you know, sometimes I'll try to make some recipes from the book and show you how to make them. So they're not intimidating when you read them. Um, again, just like writing, like following a recipe, you know, like you did add what you want to it. That's like fun of cooking. Um, is that, but anyhow, so that's kind of, you can find recipes on my website, upcoming books, um, mm-hmm. and some fun videos. Okay, great. Well, I'll have those, uh, links in the show notes for everyone. And okay. I haven't come across the, your cooking videos yet, so I'll, I'll make sure to look, look at some of those. <laughs> we'll be ready for next time. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, Darcy, thank you so much uh, just for giving your valuable you. time to talk with us today. R really appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure. And thank you so much. It's such a wonderful podcast. I love it. And we oh, had thank you. Yes, yes, this was great. Uh, so thank you so much. Everyone go out and buy all of her books and read them and give them to your friends. Uh, she's, she's got hungry mouths to feed there, uh, the four-footed kind anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right. Well, thank you again, Darcy. And uh, and, and uh, we'll, we'll see you all later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, thanks again for watching. And I want to just remind you one more time, if you enjoyed this interview, one thing is you can do is to look out near the end of May. I will have another interview with her on my Cozy Christmas podcast. It'll be different questions in different, a different format and everything. So um, it won't be just, might have a little overlap, but uh, for the most part, it'll be a, a there'll be a lot of new content there if you want to learn more about her. And then also, if you liked this episode and you like this interview, please do let me know in the comments below if you're on YouTube. Share and like and subscribe to this podcast and to the YouTube channel if that it would be your uh, cup of tea. As always, check out in the show notes for ways you can help support our podcast financially. I really appreciate anything and everything that you, uh, you all do uh, for the podcast. Uh, as, as always, I appreciate it. You could, you could be in your favorite chair, reading your favorite book, but you chose to listen or watch this instead. And I greatly appreciate it. You will also find links below on where on the books we talked about and where you can find Darcy online and purchase her books and to help support her as well. I know she'd appreciate that. I will see you again on Saturday for our next part of our Great Expectations read along uh, wrap up video for chapters 40 through 42. And then um, stay tuned because in two weeks, I will have another author on for an interview. Her name is Jendaya Brooks Flemister, and she's a relatively new science fiction short story writer. And I came across a couple of her short stories that I absolutely loved, and I'm excited to have her on the podcast. So that will be out in two weeks. And in the meantime, I encourage you to go out and find her stories and read them because we're going to talk about them in the next interview. And that should be out on or about May 10th. So you can keep an eye out for that. And so until next time, my name is Art. You can reach me uh, online at Bookshelf Odyssey, as well as my email is bookshelfodysseypodcast at gmail.com. And so until next time, I want to remind you that words and stories have power and you should share yours. Take care.